right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So today's actually going to be a pretty interesting tutorial, because what we're going to be doing today is going to be using Tikinta to create a custom music player for us. So what this is going to do is just going to allow us to select a song from our computer and then play it. We're also going to have different controls, such as um, increasing or reducing the volume or pausing or resuming the song that we have playing. So it's going to be a pretty basic music player, but at the end of the tutorial, you'll be able to have your own custom GUI version of a music player, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So first off, like always, we're going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Once it's all loaded up, what I want to do next is um, create a new file. I'm going to save this as musicplayer.py.py because it's a Python file and we save Python files with a .py extension. So let's save that up. Now that it's all saved up, we're going to have to do a few imports for us to work with this. So we're going to need something called Mixer, which is going to be imported from our Pygame module. So we're going to do from Pygame import Mixer. So we're going to be using the Mixer uh, class right here to later on carry out different tasks such as play music, resume music, pause music or change the volume of it. Now for our Tikinta, we're going to be, uh, I mean for our GUI, we're going to be using the module Tikinta. Now we usually just do from Tikinta import star. This is like beginner stuff um, just because you guys were beginning and I, I just taught you to use this but you shouldn't really be using this, you should be importing the classes that you need separately instead of importing everything together. Now there's different um, reasons to why you shouldn't do this, but I'm not going to go through all of them in this tutorial. Either way, we're only going to import the classes that we need from our library. So from Tikinta, import TK, because we're going to be needing that. Then from Tikinta, import label, we're going to be needing that to create labels on our screen. From Tikinta, import button that's for creating buttons on our screen import entry to get the actually we actually don't need the entry for this one so i'm going to get rid of that and finally from tick enter import file dialog so what the file dialog does is it basically lets the user select the file so something like this so when i click on file open file this dialog right here which lets me select the file for my visual studio code that's going to be the file dialog that's going to pop up for our music player so that user can select a music file. Cool. Let's close this off and let's start coding the actual GUI. So first off, what I'm going to do is go ahead and start programming my main screen. So I'm going to create a section for main screen, main screen, and then I'm going to call my main screen master and assign that to TK. Now if I run this quickly, we're going to have a, actually we need to also do Okay, let's get rid of that master.main loop in order for this to actually work. Let's run this, and as you see here, right here, we have a little window showing up and it's called TK. Great, so now let's go ahead and give it a title. So, master.title music player. That's fine. Now we're going to go ahead and add a few labels onto this. So, labels. First label is going to be placed on master. The text is going to be custom music player now this is sort of like the title for my music player um, i'm going to be able to also set a font for it which is going to be calibri like we always use and then i'm going to set it with the size of 15. then i'm also going to change the foreground to be equals to red which means i want the color of the font to be red and finally i'm going to use dot grid to place it on my screen now i'm going to be using sticky equals and then ma make sure that you are using speech marks and then n because since we haven't done from tikinta import star we need to use speech marks here then you need to use comma and row equals zero then we're also going to be doing padding x equals 120 which means it's going to have a space of 120 units from the left and from the right now lastly i'm going to try and figure out why i have this error over here positional argument Hmm, weird. Oh, actually, I need to do font equals. So after font, you need to do equals and then save that up. It should work fine. Now, let me quickly run this up to see if it has actually worked. And as you see right here, I have a little lovely window popping up that says music player as a title and then custom music player as the label. And it's also left two 120 um, units of space on the left 
and from the right, making the window a bit bigger in width. Cool. Now let's go ahead and add a few more labels that will help put some life to this program. So I'm going to copy my first label and then I'm going to paste it right here just to save some time. Now for the second label, I'm going to say, I don't know, please, please select a music track you would like oops, to play. Cool. That sounds friendly enough and I'm going to change the um, font size to actually be 12 because 15 is for the heading. Let's make 12 the normal um, standard size for pretty much everything else. I'm going to change the foreground to blue. Why not just add some color in there? Obviously my color choice is terrible but just for the tutorial let's go with it. And then I'm going to set the sticky to north which is fine. We don't really need the padding X because it's already been applied and we change row to 1. Let's run this to see if that worked and it has worked so we have the title and the subheading as well let's close this off and start coding the rest too so what's going to be next is we're going to have a label that's going to be showing us um a little volume section um so let's go ahead and do that so label um master and then we do font equals oops Calibri, comma, 12. Cool. So what we do after that is we're not actually going to be um, put it on a grid, putting it on a grid straight away. We're going to be assigning it to a variable and then putting it on a grid. So song, um, title, label. So let's do the song title label first and then we'll do the volume label. The so song title label equals Calibri, comma, 12. And then song title label dot grid. Now sticky is going to be equals to north, and row is going to be three. Now you might argue why row equals three because we've only got up to row equals one. Now I need to leave row two to actually be for a button that's going to allow the user. So there's going to be a button below the please select a music track you would like to play, which is going to allow the user to pretty much select the track they want to play. So we're leaving that space for the button. Cool, that's why we've skipped a row. And then we've gone to three instead of two. Now, what we're gonna do um, after that is create a volume label. So volume label equals label. And then in there, master and then font equals, oops, calibri. And then 12 for the font size. Now we're gonna use this and then place it on our screen so dot grid sticky equals north row equals five cool so these two labels right here the song title label is going to display the title of the song or the name of the song and then the volume label is going to show the volume the current volume that the song is playing on now obviously these are not going to be filled in from start because we don't know what song is being played or what volume the song is being played by default we're going to be adding text to these um, variables later on. So that's fine since we have them ready. Um, we also went on to row five right here instead of row four because we're going to be needing the volume um, buttons. That's why we have left a row. Cool. So now let's go ahead and create our buttons. So buttons. I mean, if I, if I run this just to show you guys what's going on, it's going to look the same, but just a bit of space right here because we've got empty labels that haven't got any text in them. We're going to be populating them later, but for now, just stick with me. So we're going to have a button. It's going to be placed on master and the text is going to be select song. Now, as you see right here, I'm going to also set it a font of Calibri and 12 for the font size. Um, command, we're going to assign that later. And for grid, we're going to do row equals two like i said before we left a empty row for this and we're going to do sticky equals north because we want it to be right in the middle let's run this and as you see right here i have a little button that says select song now if i click on it nothing happens because we yet need to add a command to it which is going to run a function when we click on it cool let's close that off um let's add also a little padding actually we'll leave that alone so once we're done with that, we have done our first button. Now let's go ahead and add a few more buttons. So next button is going to be on master as well. Text is actually going to be fours. Um, 
font is going to be uh, let's see Calibri and then font size 12 with a dot grid where the row is going to be 3 and then sticky is going to be east cool so we're placing this pause button on the same um, same line as the song title label so it's going to be placed on the east which means on the very left let's run this i mean on the very right my bad so it's going to be placed on the left i mean on the right because it's placed on the east and then in the middle is going to be the song label which we're going to add later okay that's fine now i'm going to copy this because we're wasting a bit of time tapping this out each time now I'm going to change the text to actually be resume because we need a resume button if we have a pause button. And then I'm going to change dot grid where the sticky E equals to west. And the row can stay the same, which is fine because we want it to be on the same row just onto the left side of the screen. So we're going to have resume on the left and pause on the right, which is fine. And then we're going to have the song title in the middle because it is um, placed based on north, which means middle. Cool. Now let's go ahead and paste that again because we need um, volume buttons as well. Now for this, I'm going to change the text to, let's just say plus for now, because it's just volume plus. Um, I'm just going to paste minus before that because we're going to have minus on the left and plus on the right. So minus plus and then dot grid is going to be row equals five. And then we're going to do the same over here or equals five, but we're going to do sticky equals west. Oops, sticky equals west for our minus button. And we're going to do sticky equals east for our plus button. Let's run this to show you how it looks like. And as you see right here, we have resume pause minus plus. The minus plus is for the volume and the volume um, label is going to go right in the middle because it's already been placed up here. So it's on the same row, row five but it is placed sticky equals north, which is in the middle. Cool. So now what we're also going to do is give the button, these two buttons need a width because they look kind of small. So I'm going to give them a small width. So I'm going to go in my button attributes and then after font, I'm going to do a new attribute for width where I'm going to assign the width to five. Same down here for the plus button. So minus width equals five. Cool. So let's run this now. And as you see right here, we have our minus and plus buttons that are ready as well. Cool. So what we also need to do is, as you see right here, we've skipped a row. We're missing row number four. So that row was meant to be for a volume label. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to our label section, copy from line 13, create a new line and then paste it right here. And then in here, I'm going to change the text into volume. This is just to separate it, kind of. And then everything else is going to be the same. We're going to change the foreground to red. Um, and then sticky equals north, row equals four. Now, let me show you what that's done. As you see right here, it's created a volume label and created a separate a bit when the pause resume. So it kind of looks a bit better than it did before. Cool. So that's that done. Now we need to actually add commands to these buttons. So what we're going to do to add commands is I'm going to close this off first of all. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to add those commands too. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to add the commands. So first of all, we're actually going to do the command for playing the song. The controls, we're going to do them later. So to start with, we're going to need a variable up here that's going to be called current volume. So this is going to store a float at 0.5 so the current volume is going to be 0.5 so the volume is going to always start on 0.5 so half the volume of your system which is fine now we need to also go ahead in this button right here and create a command so that it can actually look for a function comma command equals um, play song so I'm going to create a function very soon called play song because every time this select song button is clicked, we're going to have this um, play song function run. So above my main screen, I'm going to have a section for functions. So let's do that. Functions and def play song. 
is going to have first it's going to have a new variable which is going to be called file name now this is going to store a file name of the song that's being selected so we use file dialog for that so file dialog dot ask open file ask open file name because we want the file name um, and then we're going to do initial 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 directory equals c so whenever this um, window opens up it's going to open in a c directory and then i'm going to do title equals please select a file let me show you what that does and i'm going to print whatever oops go down here and i'm going to actually print whatever file name is being returned here so let's run this uh, select a song and as you see right here we have a little pop-up window that opens up straight in my C drive because I've set initial directory to be there and it says please select a file up there so let me select a file right here and once I've selected it if you notice in my window down here since I asked it to print it out it prints out the exact location of the file including the name of the file so that's exactly what we want so that we can target the song we're looking for so what we're going to do next is get rid of this print statement and actually work with the file name that we just gathered. So we're going to create a new variable called current song and then we're going to equals that to file name because that's just a bit more generic to remember than just file name. Now we're going to do song title as well. Now the song title is going to be um, us having to split the file name using um, forward slash and then we're going to print song title okay actually we're gonna have to override the song title variable with song title at minus one position so it's gonna pick up whatever is in the last position of this array which is pretty much going to be the name of the song and the extension of the song so if i print song title we're going to be returned the name of the file and the extension of the file we're not going to have this long ass directory so what I'm going to do next is run this, uh, select a song, I'm just going to select this random thing right here and as you see it's only returning um, the name and the extension of the file instead of returning C then drive then users then whatever it's not returning the whole directory it's just returning the name which is what we want as the song title. So now we've got that done as well which is pretty good. Let's actually go ahead and create a try and catch exception because we need to work with that too, just in case any errors happen. So mixer is what we're going to be using to actually play the music. So mixer is an object that we have. We need to initialize it by just typing in it, open close brackets. Now mixer.load and then we're going to do mixer.load, um, actually mixer.music because we're loading music, music.load and we're going to use current song variable which is the directory to the song um, then we're going to do mixer.music why did I have caps on? mixer.music.set um, volume so this is going to let us set the volume of the song and we're going to set it to the current volume which is 0.5 which is always going to start at that then we're going to go ahead and do mixer.music dot play which is going to play the song now lastly we're going to grab our song title label that we created earlier and then we're going to use dot config to actually add some text to it so foreground is going to be equals to green because it's a happy message it's not an error and then we're going to do comma text equals now playing hold on oops and then we're going to do plus string song title so it's going to populate the label by saying now playing whatever the name of the song is. So let's go ahead and actually give that a go. But before we do that, we're also going to populate, what's wrong here? Unexpected, unexpected indent. Hmm. Okay, that's fine anyway. So before we do that, we actually need to also update the volume label to actually show the user what volume this um, song is playing at. So volume label dot config foreground equals green our text equals volume and then we're going to do plus string uh, current volume which is fine it should do the job for us and then we also need to do the exception so before we actually run this we need to do the accept statement too so accept exception as e 
and then we're going to print the exception that happens just in case any exception does happen and then we're going to do song title label dot config foreground equals red because it's an error and then we're going to do text equals error playing track cool let's run this now to see if it actually works um, select song i've got a song on my desktop which is one of the chill music i've got let's play that and I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear, but I'm going to go ahead and reduce the volume of a little bit. So I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear, but the music is actually playing through my earphones. I'm not sure if you guys would be able to hear. The title of the song is showing up here as well. It's showing up right here. If I um, Obviously the window is a bit small for it, but if we increase the window size, that will be fine. But it's showing us the label and it's also showing us the volume. So I'm going to go ahead and actually try to error this out. Actually, let me close this because it's a bit annoying. Cool. So that's nice. Let me open this up. Um, what I'm going to do is select a song and instead of selecting a song, I'm going to select a random file. And as you see, as we programmed it, it says couldn't read from um, whatever it needs to read from because that's the exception that's occurred. And then it says error playing track right here because it's an invalid file. Cool, so that's our first bit done, success. Now let's actually go ahead and um, program the different actions we have, like pause, resume, um, volume up and volume down. It's gonna be pretty easy. So let's start with increase volume and reduce volume. So what we're gonna be doing is going to our volume functions right here, so minus and plus. So on the minus, I'm going to do a comma, oops, comma and then command equals reduce, volume and then on the plus I'm going to do a comma command equals increase volume cool so let's go ahead and program our increase volume function first so below here after the play music function let's have def increase volume so once one of these functions is done we just got to copy and paste it into the other function but using a minus because we're just going to be minusing instead of adding so try and catch obviously again. Now we need to do global current volume so that the function knows to use this variable up here and not make a local copy of it. So every time we refer to current volume, it's gonna be referring to this variable up here, which is fine. And we're gonna do if current volume is less or equal to zero, then we do volume label dot config foreground equals red um, text equals volume muted so it's going to be muted so what this means is if the current volume ever reaches to zero or less than zero which it will stop at zero anyway our label for the volume is going to change to muted because it is quite rightfully muted and then we're going to make a return from there so that so that the um, volume cannot go in minus because that's just trash that's not how it's meant to work right and then if that doesn't happen, if the volume is not less or equal to zero, then we're going to do current volume equals current volume plus. Um, um, actually, I've done the thingy for the reduce volume in here. I've just realized. So I'm going to create the reduce volume first. So let's go ahead and rename from increase to reduce. Um, because I just accidentally started programming my reduce function first. So that's the reduce and this will make more sense in there. So this is to reduce the volume and not increase it. And then if the volume is not less or equal to zero, then we minus current volume from whatever um, it already had. So whatever value it was on and we minus 0.1 from it because each time we're gonna just minus 0.1. And let's make this a float just in case it doesn't already know. Float, oops just fix that quickly cool so current volume equals current volume minus float 0.1 so each time the user reduces the volume if it's not zero or less than zero we just reduce um, 0.1 from the volume which is fine now what we need to do next is go ahead and overwrite this by creating a rounded value for this so round current volume comma um, one which means I'm restricting this value to be just one decimal place so that it doesn't show me more than that. I don't want to show more than that anyway. And then we're going to use the mixer again. Dot music. Oops. Dot set volume. 
and then we're going to pass in our current volume so this is the updated current volume which was um, updated by taking away 0.1 from it which is fine and then we need to update the volume label as well so volume label dot config uh, foreground equals green actually we're gonna do foreground equals yeah green is fine green uh, comma text equals volume plus string uh, string and then we do current volume again because this is the updated volume remember which we also rounded up and then finally we do the exception so accept exception as e if there's any exception we print the exception and then we're going to do song title uh not song title label uh doo -doo 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 -doo. yeah actually song title label dot config foreground equals red and text equals track hasn't oops hasn't been selected yet so this error will mainly happen when the user tries to click on the volume minus button and the mixer is not initialized which is when the track hasn't been selected so the user will be let know just in case that happens so this is done and hopefully it should work so what i'm going to do is copy this whole function because it's pretty much the same for our increase volume as well so i'm going to copy this Control c it's very hard for me to work through this because it's quite zoomed in but hopefully it helps you guys out and then I'm going to do increase volume here. Let's change the reduce to increase. And now instead of if current volume is great, less than or equals to zero, I'm going to do if volume if current volume is greater than or equals to one because one is the max volume we can have. Um, then we do volume equals volume is max. And then we got to change this to green because it's not muted. Let's change the foreground to green. Then we do the same thing, but we're going to add a float 0.1 instead of taking away then we're gonna round it up we're gonna play it using the we're gonna update the volume to the current volume which is the updated one which is fine um, we're gonna have the volume showing up and we're gonna have the exception too which is perfect let's go ahead and see if this worked um, hopefully it did let's go to my desktop now uh, play this up and I'm on volume 0.5 right now let me reduce it and I'm not sure if you guys can hear, but I'm muted right now. If I go 0.1, it is actually playing at 0.1, which is pretty slow. And if I go all the way up to max, it shows up max. So I'm going to mute that back down because I don't want to listen to or interrupt our tutorial. So that is actually working because we're able to change the volume. So I'm going to close this off. Perfect. I'm glad we haven't had a lot of errors in this tutorial actually first time. Pretty good. So oh, the only two um, commands we actually need to program now are the pause and the resume functions. So let's go ahead and add commands to those two. So those are actually pretty short and simple. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to my pause button first up here. Comma, command equals pause. And then I'm going to go down to my resume button down here. Comma, command equals resume which is fine. Now I'm going to actually have to go and create these functions because they have been already assigned. Let's go ahead and do that. So down here, def pause. Um, so for the pause, what we're going to do is try first, and then we're going to do mixer.music.pause. Just as simple as that, because the mixer library is pretty clean. It's pretty nice. Um, the class just lets us do things easily. And then accept exception as E print e um, and then we're going to ha have to update the song title label to say there was an error song title label dot config foreground equals red um, text equals track hasn't oops not track track hasn't been selected yet which is fine now that's the error exception done as well so uh, resume function is pretty similar which is why I'm going to copy and paste this so I'm going to go ahead and copy and uh, go below this right here paste it and then we're going to change the function name of course to resume because it is not a pause function it's a resume function 
and in here we're instead of doing music mixer dot music dot pause we're gonna do mixer dot music dot unpause they should have just named it resume but the method name is unpause which is fine no um, obligations with that and the exception will still remain the same just in case the user clicks on the pause or play button before the mixer has been initialized we're gonna say tracker or track hasn't been selected let's quickly run this up hopefully it will work in the first go because the tutorial is already quite long um, let's select a song and go ahead and select the actual song now I'm gonna reduce the volume all the way down to 0.1 because I don't want it interrupting my beautiful voice of course just kidding uh, I'm gonna click on pause and as you see right here I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear my audio but hopefully you can when I click on pause the song actually pauses and when I click on resume, it actually resumes. So pause and resume are working fine as well. So that brings an end to this tutorial, guys. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. I know this is this was a pretty exciting and simple project for me to do, which is pretty um, cool to create, which is um, less than 100 lines of code as well. So anyway, guys, thanks for all the support that you guys have been showing me recently. If you have any new ideas for the channel, you can drop them under the community tab. Also, um, you can join the Discord channel that's going to be stated in the description, follow up my socials and all that. If you guys would like to contribute to the channel directory, you can do so either using um, the Patreon link that I have in my description by becoming a patron, or you can also purchase a super chat emoji or a highlighted message when the video premieres. Anyway guys, I will see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace!